<sighs> Dark Clouds. Oh boy. This is my second mainline album, and the point at which things get a little complicated, because, uh, I'll have to first be real and say this almost wasn't a main album at all. Originally, when I was separating out my Bandcamp releases into main albums and compilations, Dark Clouds was just going to be a comp. It got upgraded to album status while I was uploading my entire hidden back catalog to this channel. Through most of 2016, I was posting one music thing every week, sessions of music that I used to treat as regular albums back when I first made them until they got way too numerous and no one in their right mind is going to want to sit through the hours upon hours of crap I have piled up, unless they're curious behind what kinds of ideas were going through my mind when I put together any uh, given mainline 256 Pi album or comp. But I digress. Uh, while I was uploading that backlog, I got almost no feedback on any of it, which, you know, them's the breaks. Happens to everybody, and I wouldn't expect anyone to try slogging through all of that now. But it was interesting how my 2009 stuff specifically suddenly started getting a couple of comments from people saying that this was the best stuff they'd heard from me. And then I thought back and remembered how that stuff was a minor hit in my 7th grade computer class. Uh, Dark Clouds was music that other people were enjoying besides just me. And that felt huge. There was one little problem, though, and it's the fact that Dark Clouds, in its original form and track listing, is one of my least favorite things I put on Bandcamp. <laughs> Not because of the tracks themselves, well, sometimes because of the tracks themselves, but mainly the way it came together as a whole, and how it all presented itself. It had a decent run through up through around Deep Zone, and then it just fell off with the seven minute dance of the waterfalls and especially the eight minute grand view from the dome being unbearably long and repetitive and not having the ideas to justify being that length. A lot of tracks on Bubble Machine were padded out, Alfalfa is 12 minutes, but it at least builds up and pays off and it goes through different sounds and ideas and tries to keep you from being bored. Grandview does, from the Dome doesn't even try, and is the worst example of artificial padding that's ever come up in my music. There's weird moves like me putting one penny for total randomness and pieing this guy into the same track when they don't really make sense for me to do that. Even the former is maybe a bit out of place, even if I do enjoy the random nature of it and like the flavor it added. And there's the tracks at the end that felt like they were tacked on and didn't fit into the vibe that was being created before. Wavy thing in 8-bit pieces I had to mark as bonus tracks, since I feel they ruin the flow of the album otherwise. Well, wavy thing not so much, but it's still a bit out of place and kinda silly. And, but 8-bit pieces, oof. Easily the worst ending to an album that I have designated on Bandcamp. Already a decent at best, but unsatisfying fragment of a track that was already kind of a throwaway from a session that was already made up of weird, random track fragments. But having to end this album made it a dozen times more unsatisfying. I have no idea what 2012 me was thinking with this stuff when he first put Dark Clouds together. The Bay in the Cave was the last track that I felt like at least kind of fit into the vibe set by everything else, but I still wasn't sure if it was the best ending I could have picked. And on top of that, Dark Clouds isn't really even that dark. Maybe it had some darker moments, like Dance of the Waterfalls or, I don't know, Depth Perception, but for the most part, it's no darker on average than anything I could usually come up with. In fact, I think the album is one of my happier ones. The title just came from an arbitrary matchup with some square album covers I threw together when I was discovering how creative Im image editors worked when I was really little. A lot of album covers and titles have that same story behind it, namely One Tint, Crystal Telescope, Abstract Concept, and yes, even Bubble Machine and Marble Jar. But I digress. Uh, Dark Clouds had promise as being the album of early stuff that some people actually kinda liked, but I felt like it was gonna need some serious tweaking if I was going to upgrade it like that. My many gripes of with the original form of Dark Clouds is the main reason that the remastered versions of my first three albums exist. Dark Cloud's remaster doesn't address every gripe I have in retrospect. Grand View from the Dome is still way too long, even if I could cut down a full minute of it. I still don't, I'm still not sure if I need all of it, because uh, the original cut was only like four minutes, and that was perfectly fine. 
I guess I just thought that really long, weird, spacey effects in the beginning was cool and helped make it darker and fit with a theme or something. I don't know. But whatever, Dark Clouds Remastered is at least presentable to me now, and I don't have any major regrets about the way it is. Like, I changed Pacific West to become the ending of the remastered version. I think it works way better as a closer. This, as the sunny, bright, and refreshing piece to bookend the cheerful opener in Guy in a Cornfield, the album has more of an arc now. And Pacific West has always had a special place in my heart, being a fairly direct tribute to 808 State's Pacific 202. And on the topic of Pacific West, I will say that Dark Clouds has by far my least embarrassing batch of GarageBand made material. I have basically disowned GarageBand as a music making program, and it's best for people just learning how to do things. But I will admit that good music can come out of it, if you know what you're doing, especially if you use the MIDI patches that come with the program and don't rely so much on the loops. Five entire tracks on this album were made on GarageBand, being Depth Perception, What, Underwater, Immense, and Pacific West. And I can look on those more fondly, as I came up with most of the melodies in there myself. In fact, Depth Perception is probably my personal favorite track in this collection, since I think the melodies contained within are pretty catchy, and I managed to come up with them on my own. Now, that's not to say I don't still have my problems with GarageBand. For instance, I've discovered mastering in that program can be a total crapshoot sometimes. The only Mac I had to work on is this really ancient laptop that's over a decade old, runs abysmally slowly, and I don't think even supports an internet connection anymore. Since most of the GarageBand tracks from this album relied on original MIDI sequences and not loops, the crapshoot mastering wasn't usually a problem, but it did kind of bring down what? The more squelchy, acidish synths at the end of that track obviously came from a loop, and they're way louder than the smoother sounds that came before it. I ran through that one multiple times, but the sound driver was being weird, and it always sounded different when I'd play it on my regular laptop, so I eventually just shrugged it off as then. Eh, is the best I can come up with. Yeah, I know that's just an excuse that doesn't make the track better, but stuff like this is why it's better to work on different software or computers that aren't decades out of date. Learning experience. As for other thoughts, I'll admit, personally listening to this album still feels a little bit like I'm running together ideas from those old sessions that I put together, and they still feel a bit more natural in that setting, from the spacier and more electronic sounds of depth perception to the water-themed what, the and graceful and wider tribute of uh, Treasure of the White Tower, and the kind of more random but still nostalgic uh, FJDK SLA 1 and 2. But I still think the way that Dark Clouds Remastered is put together the way it is, I think it comes together pretty well. All of it just takes me back to my middle school days, provides some nice nostalgia for me, kind of like Bubble Machine does. Though that album, I think the nostalgia is stronger, but yeah, never mind that. There are tracks like Deep Zone, which uh, I don't look upon that fondly, as that particular one is almost directly copied from a demo song that came with Acid. The demo song was even still called Deep Zone. <laughs> but I still arranged the melodies as loops myself, and the demo was originally only like two minutes, so I guess that particular arrangement is still my own, if not the melodies. And I still really like the way the track sounds with all those jazzy and moody harmonies that did bring about a sort of submarine vibe. And adding the FL Studio transcription to the remastered version made it feel more polished and less amateurish. I don't know if I have interesting insights on every track on here. I think the only others I have left to add on are The Bay in the Cave, which is a nice refreshing little journey with those weird DJ scratches that helps make it catchier for me. Good! <laughs> and who's playing in there? That one actually kind of reminds me of my little brother Johnny. Uh, he was the one who came up with the title. And I do like how the more casual nature of that one fits into the album as a whole, too. And I think that's about all the insight I have on Dark Clouds, which, after I was able to tweak it into something I could be more proud of, and people have been really encouraging about it, the experience has grown into something I feel like is good enough to consider a mainline album for me. Upgrading compilations to albums is not something I think I'm ever going to do again. It's, I think it's too late for that, and I just, my discography is set the way it is, and I think I've toyed enough with it. But yeah, I do think maybe the general lack of really long and overextended pieces has probably made it more accessible to people. I think the tracks themselves are among my strongest and most memorable, too. I may have kinda hated the original Dark Clouds, and I still don't think any version of this album lives up to its title, but encouragement from other people have has really coaxed the value out of this for me. 
There's other albums of mine that I hold more closely to my heart than this one. I think I personally hold it in lower regard than the other people I've heard from. And obviously it's perfectly okay if you don't approve of this being one of my main albums or didn't like it much yourself. But I am really glad that this album has had an effect on more than one other person besides myself. Whether it be my middle school computer education teacher or my immediate family, or the small handful of people who have supported me online via Bandcamp and others. Just seeing that kind of thing is really special, and that's why Dark Clouds is one of my mainline albums. Thank you.